Without photosynthesis, a plant can't make starch. Remember that glucose, a product of photosynthesis, can be converted into starch, and a plant will store starch in various places, including the leaf, where photosynthesis takes place. Using iodine, we can test for starch, but first you must prepare the leaf so the iodine can be absorbed into the plant cells and interact with the iodine. Step one is to boil the leaf in water to kill the plant cells and stop enzymic activity. Step two is to place the leaf in a boiling tube that contains ethanol. You can then place the boiling tube containing ethanol into the beaker containing boiling water. Ethanol boils at around 78 degrees Celsius, so we can turn the Bunsen burner off as the heat energy left in the boiling water should be enough to boil the ethanol. Remember, ethanol is flammable. It's best not to have an open flame present. We boil the leaf in ethanol to remove the chlorophyll and remove the color from the leaf. This is so we can more easily observe a color change when we add iodine. Step three is to wash the leaf in cold water. This helps soften the leaf and it can help to spread the leaf over a tile. The final step is to add iodine to the leaf and observe the color change. Now we have a test for whether photosynthesis took place in a leaf or not. We can now investigate what happens if a leaf is exposed to different conditions and how that might affect photosynthesis and therefore starch production. Here is a plant that has had many of its leaves exposed to different conditions. It's important to note that this plant has variegated leaves meaning the leaves have more than one colour, in this case, green and white. It is important that you realise that the white parts of the leaf on this plant do not contain chlorophyll. This will be really important later on. Leaf A has had nothing done to it. Leaf B is in a sealed glass vessel which contains 30 cm cubed of sodium hydroxide solution. You need to know that sodium hydroxide absorbs carbon dioxide so this leaf will have no access to carbon dioxide. Leaf C will also be in a sealed glass container, but this one will contain 30 cm cubed of water. This acts like a control experiment to show that leaf B and C have access to the same volume of atmosphere, and it should prove that the sodium hydroxide is removing the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and that the sealed container on its own is not affecting the leaf. Leaf D will have a strip of black tape covering a section of the leaf. It is important that before we start letting the plant photosynthesize, we need to be sure that the plant has no stored starch from any previous photosynthetic activity. So, we place the plant in a dark cupboard with no available light, so the plant uses up all its starch reserves. We call this de-starching the plant. We place the de-starched plant under a light source, so any starch being made now is new and each leaf will now be photosynthesizing under their new respective conditions. After some time has passed, we can now test each leaf for the presence of starch. We get the following results where we show the before and after the starch test for each leaf. Leaf A shows that the green parts of the leaf have starch, but the white parts do not. This is because the white parts of the leaf have no chlorophyll and therefore can't photosynthesize and make glucose and therefore make starch. So this proves chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis. Leaf B shows no positive result for starch because carbon dioxide is required for photosynthesis to occur. So no carbon dioxide, no photosynthesis, no glucose, therefore no starch. Leaf C is the same as leaf A, as this just again showed that the volume of atmosphere exposed to plant B was not affecting photosynthesis. So photosynthesis happened as normal. Eventually the leaf would be affected, of course, as the carbon dioxide would run out in the sealed container. But in this experiment, not enough time had passed. Leaf D shows a strip where the starch test is negative. This shows that the tape blocked the light and the leaf was not photosynthesizing where the tape was and therefore not making any glucose and therefore no starch. So this shows that light is needed for photosynthesis to occur. Finally, a more direct way to measure photosynthetic activity could be to use data loggers that can measure oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. You could seal a plant in a bag and measure the change in oxygen over time. And you should see a rise if the plant is photosynthesizing because oxygen is the byproduct of photosynthesis. 
So basically, the faster the oxygen is being made, the faster the plant is photosynthesizing. If you were to measure carbon dioxide levels, you should see carbon dioxide levels decrease over time as photosynthesis uses up carbon dioxide. And again, the quicker the plant is using up carbon dioxide, in theory, the faster it is photosynthesizing. In the next lesson, we will take a closer look at interpreting limiting factor graphs regarding photosynthesis.